everyone to stand as we go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you for your goodness and for your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. You are God and you're God alone. Father, we beseech thee that you would come in and bless us in a special way today. We ask that you would bless this occasion in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing descend. Let your anointing, let the presence of God be upon this service today. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And Lord, what happens in this room, what happens under this roof, you get the glory and honor out of it in the name of Jesus. For with you we can do, without you we can do nothing, but with you we can do all things. We ask that you bless the leader of this home, the leader of this house. Touch him. Bless in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, everyone that we be going forth, we ask a special anointing upon their lives. In the name of Jesus, Lord, allow some soul to be saved. Stretch out your hand today in the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, let sick be healed today. Let the sick be healed. Allow demons to be casted out. God, we just come to have church <laughs> that you might have your way in the name of Jesus. Bless the choir as they sing songs of Zion. Lift bowed heads today. Let your press go free. We'll never give your name the praise. The glory and the honor belongs to you in Jesus' name. And the saints at large saying, Amen. 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 God bless. This is the day that the Lord has made. On behalf of the chief consecrator and visionary apostle Richard Taylor, the entire membership of the New Day Deliverance Holiness Church and Fellowship of Deliverance, I take this wonderful opportunity to welcome every one of you here to this great consecration ceremony in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is no other name but the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Come put your hands together for the Lord. We welcome you here in the name of the Lord and we are so happy that you take time out to come and join with us today. Right at this time, my dear friends, we would like to take this opportunity for us to observe the apostolic procession. So would you please stand with us this night? <laughs>
bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, praise and magnify the name of the Lord. We are privileged today to have our visionary and chief consecrator of the New Day Deliverance Holiness Church and Fellowship of Deliverance Churches, none other than the Chief Apostle, Richard Taylor. Bless the name of the Lord. We also have the opportunity and the privilege to have the co-consecrator pastor of Faith City International, president of International Fellowship of Faith Churches and Ministries, none other than Apostle David Harewood. Right at this time, I'm going to ask Apostle Abernathy to read the scriptures for us. The scripture will be read from the book of St. Matthew, chapter number 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is followed by Prophetess Jackie Herewood, who will give us our second reading this evening. Praise the Lord. I will be reading from Titus, chapter 1, verse 4 and following. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine nor striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, specifically they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them that sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. May God increase you more and more in the hearing and the doing of the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for the reading of the word this evening. And as I stand there listening to the reading of the word, I can't help but thinking about all scriptures. It's given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, 
thoroughly furnished unto all good works. There's a charge this evening. All scriptures. He said, go ye therefore into all the world and preach my gospel, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And I would be with you even unto the end. This evening, we want to thank God for this wonderful time of fellowship. And uh, right at this time, we're going to have the Apostle David Harewood. Praise God. A blessing for the evening to each and every one. We greet you in that name which is above every name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. To Apostle Taylor, we greet you this evening, Apostle, and to uh, Apostle Carlos, Pastor Abinati, and all these wonderful men and women of God throughout the congregation. We greet you in the name of Jesus. I'm here to, today to bring a message. A message of hope. A message of deliverance. A message that is going to strengthen the body. And I want to take your attention this evening to the book of Exodus chapter 17. Exodus 17 and 1. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do we tempt? Lord. I will just hold it there for a while. Here we see in the word of God, the Bible deals with three important positions for leadership. And as we walk with the people, we want to examine what God is saying. These three things I'm going to deal with this evening. Number one is, as a leader, you've got to walk with the people. Number two, you walk before the people. And then you walk above the people. This is positionally setting an individual. There are many types of leaders in the church today. But we are dealing specifically with the apostle. The apostle. And when we look at the apostle, we notice that how Jesus Christ chose his apostles. And he put them in position. And I want to say there is a very, there is a place in the life of the apostle or the leader that we have to understand what goes on. The first thing we got to understand, walking the, with the people, letting the people get acquainted with you. You understand that? And get close to you so that they know you, they know your moods, they know your ups and downs. They understand your likes and dislike. They know the food you like. And you become a commoner among the people. Yes. They wanted even to stone the leader. After you get so common, walking in that position, which is very important for people to understand who you as the leader is. But you cannot remain in that condition all the time. Because when you remain in that condition, 
for too long, you get so common. They can call you up anytime. And members love that. Oh, they love that. But if we examine the scriptures, we will see what happened to Moses. Moses, after he walked with the people for that length and period of time, the Bible said in verse 2 of Exodus 17, wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why child you with me? Wherefore do we tempt the Lord? And the people tasted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Whereof is this that thou hast brought us out of Egypt to kill us? And our children and our cattle with this. Verse 4 is very important. The Bible said, Moses cried unto the Lord. It reached a place where the leader began to cry with broken heart. And when this happened, he went to the Lord and he said, Lord, what shall I do unto these people? They're almost ready to stone me now. Why? Because he reached to a position, and you could reach as a leader in a position where the people get so common with you, that they would even want to throw stones on you. And when this time reach, there is a very important place to change your position. And in changing position, many will not like it. They always remember the good old days. Look what God said in verse 5, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people. So you change position as a leader at a certain time and you go before the leader. That don't mean you have a big head. That don't mean that you're discriminating. But if you are going to function in the position where God has placed you, you've got to change position. And that is so important. He said, go on before the people and take with you the elders of Israel. And don't forget the rod. Take the rod of God in your hand. Wherein thou smoothest the river, take thy hand and go. Behold, I stand before thee there upon the rock of heaven. So we see here the second position is to go before the people. You change position with walking with them. And now you begin to go before them. This is the place where you gain respect and confidence. And people, some will like it, and they will like you to walk with them all the time. But as you begin to change your position in leadership, the people begin to respect you more. Hallelujah. And that is the place that God can begin to do something tremendous in your life. We as leaders today, we cannot stay in one position all the time. Nor else we will not be able to advance in the kingdom. We will not be able to grow as God wants us to grow. And there we see Moses begin to experience a different in his ministry. You and I are going to receive a different in our ministry when we begin to walk before the people. And we changed that position. Verse 8 said, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. And this is the other position I want to deal with today. you got to go above the people. You see that? you got to stand in a different position. And this is the third stage of leadership. This is the way God magnifies you. This is the place where God does something tremendous in your life. We see here that Moses was walking first among the people. But then God tell him to change position. 
And this is a critical place to take this third step in leadership, where you begin to walk above the people. This don't mean that you're, you don't like the people, but for your safety, for your safety and communion with God, you've got to change position. Now, if you re remain in those positions, you will be just like the people. And there got to be a separation between the, the man or the woman of God and the place where God has taken us. And that is the reason why it is so important to change position. Some will say, I remember the good old days when you used to just go with us and we used to eat fried chicken together. They will tell you things like, oh, you, 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 you're not the same person. Oh, in sure, I'm not the same person. But they love that old good days when you were drinking juice and eating crackers. But I want to say God is, is elevating you. God is doing something. Here today we are elevating a young man that God has called for many years ago. I know his life. I know his walk. I've seen him grown and how God has elevated him in ministry. And I want to tell you that some positions and some critical areas in our lives that we got to make some changes. Each and every person within the sound of my voice, you got to take and make some drastic changes in your spiritual standing. No else for the next 10 years you'll be the same position that you are. But if you will take these words today and apply it to your life, there are going to be some great changes that God himself is going to do in your life. Oh yes, he will. Hallelujah. We see it in the conclusion of my message. The Bible said in verse 10, Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and her went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And, and, and he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. So he understood that God had already done some spiritual transaction in his life. Just his hands alone can elevate and something happen. You see, I tell you, when you make that change, what's going to happen? Something supernaturally had taken place. Moses' hands were heavy, the Bible said, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and her stayed up his hands. The one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. I want to say all leaders need someone to lift their hands. Leaders always need somebody that is going to lift their hands and ease the burden. And the tension that they have to go through. And I want to say that God has placed leaders in churches for positions. He has have have put them there for certain reason. And, just, and Moses at this, at this time in his life, he needed somebody to lift his hands. The Bible clear, declares that the stone was not good enough. So he had to get two men that stood with him down through the years and know his walk. And when they lifted his hands and keep his hands steady up there, they won the war. Every church, every congregation has wars to fight. And the only way we, we can be successful in, our, in the war that we have to fight is somebody to lift our hands and see the work of God go on. Somebody got to lift their leader hand. Don't pull him down, but lift him up. And I want to say we are here this evening to lift up, amen, Apostle Julian Coco, hallelujah, Carlos. We are here to lift him up, to lift his hands up way in America. I know there are many, of course, in Curacao that is lifting him up. But I want to say our duty as a servant of God is not only to lift him up, but the Apostle Taylor, we're going to lift you up. In the name of Jesus, to see the hand of God move in this part of, of Texas. I believe that greater things is about to happen. 
greater things about to take place. But if we will begin to lift up the servants of God and we are going to see the glory of God. We are going to see a move of God in this end time. Amen. That I want to see we can't compare with none other error that have gone on before us. All because we understand the levels that we have to go through as leaders. And at the end of it, lift up your leader's hand. God bless you this evening. Uh, the adult choir. Would you put your hands together for them this evening? Hallelujah. in me. 